Hello and welcome to Food Slide. Do we drink soup or do we eat soup? That's the question for today. So what do you think is the right answer? Well, there's no right answer to it. Because with soups, there comes chunks of meats and vegetables. So technically you cannot say that I drink soup because you're eating the chunks of meats and vegetables that are present in the soup. However, if you are being served a clear soup in a glass, which you hold from your hand and put directly in your mouth, and you know, you're just drinking it down, in that case, you can still say that you're drinking the soup. But if your soup has chunks of meat, so if you're using a spoon and with the help of a spoon, if you're eating the soup, that would say that you're actually eating the soup. You cannot drink something with a spoon. Do you drink cold drink with a spoon? You don't drink cold drink with spoons. Do you drink uh, wine with a spoon? You don't drink wine with a spoon. You drink it from a glass. Or, uh, you know, sometimes uh, if, if something is poured in a, in a bowl, bowl also, and you're, you're touching the bowl to your lips and drinking it down, in that case we can say it is the term we can use is drinking but if you're using a spoon you don't drink things or liquids using a spoon you eat things using a spoon because what you're doing is you're holding up the liquid and chunks of meat so vegetable which are present in the soup and that is why we call we eat soup and generally soups are also served with bread rolls so that is also one of the reasons that you're eating the bread rolls along with the soup so you say that we eat soup now let us talk about the classification of soups. Soups are classified into four major parts. Thick soups, those soups which are thickened by the addition of something. Thin soups are those soups which are liquid or viscosity is less in thin soups. In thick soups, those are viscous soups. Then we have cold soups and then we have international soups. I will be talking to you about all these four categories of soups in today's video. So let us first talk about thick soups, which are puree, whisk, chowder, balute, and cream. Now these are the five classification of thick soups. Every thick soup has one thickening agent due to which it becomes thick. Let us talk about cream soups. The thickening agent in cream soups is bechamel sauce. So whenever you see a soup which is named as cream the broccoli, cream the tomato, remember there must be a addition of bechamel sauce in that soup due to which the soup has thickened up. Then comes puree. In puree, whatever soup you're making, in the end you put everything in a blender and make it into a fine puree. And by pureeing the soup, it becomes it thickens up. Then comes chowders. Chowders are basically soups from America which are thickened by the addition of potatoes and chowders are always cooked in milk and finished with cream. Then come valute. Valutes are those soups which are thickened by the addition of valute sauce. And in the end come bisque. Now by bisque you should always remember a bisque is a soup in which some kind of seafood is added and bisque are thickened by using rice flour. So these were your five soups which comes under the category of thick soups along with their thickening agents. We then have thin soups. Under thin soups comes two categories, broth and consumables. Now what are thin soups? Thin soups are those soups which are not viscous or which are not thickened by the addition of anything. Thin soups would never coat the back of your spoon but it is very important that, that they should have some body, they should have some flavor. When you talk about broth, now broth are those soups which are not passed. There must be some chunks of meats, vegetables in a broth and which, be, which is also garnished with some chopped herbs in the end. So this is what broths are. And when we talk about consume, thin soups are, like I said, thin soups are further divided into two categories, broths and consumers. Broths are the unpassed soups and consumers are the passed soups. By passed soups, I mean when I pour consume in a bowl, you would be able to see the bottom of the bowl. 
there might be there might not be any chunks of meats and vegetables in a clear soup but there would be a visibility in clear soup in broths there might not be a visibility there might you might not be able to see the bottom of the soup bowl when you pour a broth into a soup bowl but in consumers it is a it is a must that when you pour a consume in a soup bowl you must see the bottom of the soup bowl so this is how we differentiate broth and consumers next we have cold soups now whenever you make cold soups you should always remember that cold soups should always be served cold and not chilled because when you when you eating or drinking something which is very chilled you cannot figure out the flavors or the seasoning which is there it's in something which is very chilled just served to you very chilled now cold soups can be thick can be thin can be passed can be unpassed few examples of cold cold soup is gazpacho very famous soup from spain in some uh, ways we also serve gelled consomme which is also served cold to you the last classification in soup would be your international soups now every country has one soup of their country of origin for example italy is minestrone france is french onion soup green turtle soup from england so this is what a category the fourth category is all about international soups they can be cold they can be hot they can be thick they can be thin they can be passed they can be unpassed so by international soups i mean one soup which has been named as a national soup of this or that country would fall under this category i hope you understand to this topic about soup thanks for watching today's video have a good day